We do want to bring in now medical correspondent Dr. Jennifer Ashton for a closer look at some of the risks of radiation exposure. We heard from the professor there some of the conflicting reports, at least in his mind, of what we're seeing. We're being told low levels of radiation, yet we're hearing of radiation sickness. What are some of the factors that go into whether or not uh, you may develop something from radiation? Well, when you talk about radiation exposure, Erica, and in medicine and science, we're very accustomed to dealing with radiation. We deal with it every single day in the hospital on, on a different level, of course. You're talking about really three key factors factors, the time that you're exposed to the radiation, the distance from the source of the radiation, and whether there's any shielding. So that could be anything from being inside a building to a lead apron to protective clothing. So we know about some of the evacuations were put into place. Looking at this though, who is the most at risk for some sort of radiation exposure? Well, two big groups of population right, right now, Erica. One is the cleanup workers. The people who are working at these facilities are taking extra precautions. They're limiting their amount of time to the direct radiation to the highest radiation sources and of course they're wearing protective clothing but those people are at greatest risk then and you talk about the general Japanese population children up to the age of 18 tend to be most at risk because they have the most actively dividing cells in mm -hmm. their body but really anyone who's within a certain radius could be at risk, not just short term, but long term. And they could be at risk for things like thyroid cancer. We've been hearing a lot about these potassium iodide tablets. Right. Is that a protection against thyroid cancer? It, it is. And what happens is the, the thyroid gland uses iodine very actively. So anyone who will be exposed to radiation should be taking KI, potassium iodide, as soon as possible before exposure mm -hmm. so that their thyroid gland uses that and not the radioactive iodine. We're talking about a, a, the radioactive source is I-131 that can be liberated in these types of radiation accidents. So you want to protect the thyroid gland. You also want to think about actively dividing tissue you in a gastrointestinal tract and you can see short-term consequences like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, some, some blood effects, short-term as well as long-term. When you talk about thyroid cancer, that might not show up for two to four years. Wow. Blood cancers like leukemias might not be detected for decades. Wow. Jen, thanks. You bet.